Well, it's the day before Halloween, and uh, I can't think of a more Halloween Marvel Legends figure than this one right here. One of the villains of the night. It's Marvel's Jack-O-Lantern. And I already have um, Morbius, so I have both of them. They're kind of like, you know, scary Halloween creatures. He's sort of a vampire, and I guess he's sort of a Jack Pumpkins or whatever. But the main reason I wanted these was, well, I really liked him, but I also wanted to finish my Build-A-Figure. And I have one part left to go. Let me show you something real quick. Um, all the different, many different parts that come with this guy. This is one of the most expansive Build-A-Figures. Because, I mean, you can, it's an absorbing man, and you can uh, change him in all kinds of different configurations because the idea of the character is anything he touches, he absorbs its uh, molecular structure. So if he's holding this metal wrecking ball chain, his arm is turning into metal. But say he wasn't, you could change it. Say he was touching something made out of wood, like Groot or something, you could use this arm. Say he wasn't touching anything, there's a, there's a plain arm, and there's a plain head. Kind of looks a little bit like um, Kingpin. This arm has rock, like he just touched something made out of stone. So it's it's really a cool build a figure. Um, so let's start with this one, so I can finish this guy up. First thing he comes with is like a witch's broom because it has little foot pedals like you'd see on Harry Potter. But they molded it to make it look like it's flaming. I mean, if, as far as I know, this could be the same prop they use for Harry Potter toys. He also comes with this um, sickle. There might be another word for it. It's a, but it's a small sickle. Not the, not the two-handed sword. He comes with a little fire grenade. Of course, my final Build-A-Figure part for Absorbing Man. And the figure itself. And it kind of reminds me a bit of Ghost Rider with all the flame effects on him he has a very uh sort of petite body very very small body that they might be recycling from a different figure uh he has a belt with these little flame grenades on it so you can have him hurling one and yet and actually it fit in his hand there there might be uh it did fit in his hand really well Let's try this hand. But I think you could pose it with the, the flame grenade or the sickle, which looks really, really cool. The sickle probably looks better in this hand. He's got some very spindly fingers. If we look at the picture, he has the sickle in this hand. I guess you just sort of squeeze the finger the fingers in there. It doesn't hold it very well, but you can still pose them with it. Articulation, um, his head uh, swivels, and it's on sort of a ball joint, so it can nod, turn. He's got the typical Marvel Legends other articulation with the phenomenal points of articulation. The ball hinges the this is called a um this is actually called a diaphragm joint right here he's got swivel wa waist um kind of very skinny 
skinny legs. He's a very, like I say, he's a very petite figure. And the funny thing is, is they gave him this broom, but it looks like a riding broom rather than a flaming broom. I'm thinking mostly because of this part right here, but that's okay. It's still something cool to pose him with, or you could maybe have him hold it. So, just a very cool character, a very Halloween character with his pumpkin head, his jack-o'-lantern head. That makes the character very cool and special to open. Ooh. Um, I've never seen this on a Marvel Legends character. He's got uh, a clicking sound when you uh, move his arms up. That's interesting. That's the first time I've ever seen that on Marvel Legends. Very clicky joints. I don't think... Morbius, there's a dull click. You can both get him in these sort of horror movie poses. But if you compare his body to Morbius's, he's much more petite. Look, look at that. He, he's got the clip too. I never noticed that. Absorbing Man now has his leg. We have a complete absorbing man now. Two legs, one wrecking ball. The wrecking ball, like a lot of Marvel Legends accessories, is a little disappointing because if you you look in the picture, it looks a little bit shinier, like they were gonna put a silver, like if they were gonna do a silver wash on it, but it's just pretty much molded. In the same color is quite hollow feels kind of cheap the chain doesn't move it's just molded in one piece but absorbing man himself is a good sized figure so you feel like you got a build a figure sometimes they're no bigger than any of the other ones and he feels solid he doesn't feel too cheap like some other build a figures feel like lesser action figures and that shouldn't be the case because if you're trying to complete a build a figure, you're putting a, a lot into these. So to compare size, you can see he's much taller than Jack O' Lantern. He can sit. He's got great articulation. And in a second, we'll see how he stacks up to another. Um, tough figure here. In this case, Luke Cage and uh, Claire Temple from the hit TV show, Marvel Luke Cage. She's the character played by Rosario Dawson, and that's a pretty good facial sculpt. I'll just read the back. Um, when Luke Cage meets Nurse Claire Temple, he discovers that even a bulletproof man sometimes needs someone to help him keep it together. So, um, she has several different sets of hands. She has her regular hands. She has these uh, medical gloves, a medical bag, and then she has sort of these Wolverine uh, um, claw hands. And the side of the package, picture of her for the show, picture of Luke Cage with bullets not penetrating him. So let's first take out the parts, the little medical examination gloves, which is probably a first for me on that. On that I have uh, alternate examples. Okay, 
So first we're going to look at Luke Cage. One of my friends pointed out to me that this is the same body from Hydro Man. And I it, it, believe it is that they recycled the body. But it is an all new head sculpt that really looks, and I can't recall the actor's name at the moment, who plays Luke. This is my second Luke Cage action figure, but this is my first in this scale. His watch. I mean, it's, this figure himself is pretty simple. He's just a, a man with a t-shirt and jeans and like Timberland boots or something. And he... But the facial sculpt is really good. Same with Rosario Dawson, Claire Temple. It really looks like her. She's got regular, she starts out with just regular hands, but you can do the exam gloves. When you decide on what you want to pose them with, I always recommend not to swap out the hands very many times because, like, I might probably pose them with these hands because, you know, after a while, this plastic can tear. She has soft hair, so she can turn her head, which is nice because a lot of these figures are molded with, um, really hard hair she's wearing a like sort of a tight top and some very tight I'm guessing those are jeans or leggings and some very plain looking office shoes so if you just took all the accessories away these would just be two very regular looking people you can put on her purse slash medical equipment bag Or is this for him? I mean, it's almost too big for her. Does Luke Cage wear a satchel? Does that... It actually fits him better. Does he wear the satchel on the show? I honestly can't... <laughs> it fits him much better. And if we, uh... We can give her some more exciting hands here. Kind of reminds me of X-23, Wolverine's daughter. So, I think this is the better way to pose her. Otherwise, how can you even tell she's a superhero? So, him with his man purse and her with her claws, her Wolverine claws. Let's see how he stacks up against Observing Man. He's quite a bit shorter. This is a good size build a figure. So I'm pretty happy with it. I like how the belt's a separate piece. And all of the joints. The only critique I have is, yeah, both of these have very, like, at first I didn't realize it, but I'm really kind of noticing after touching the other figures, they both feel cheap in this chest area. Like, that feels quite hollow compared to other Marvel Legends that are much more solid. Like, if you look at Drax, it, this just feels much more solid, sturdy than this one. That feels almost like eggshell. It's weird. I hope they haven't gone cheap on us. This is such a cool figure. I love his gold. Look at that gold eye. That's just such a cool effect. And then you can. You can have him just go like. It does. It can make some really good poses with the uh, the wrecking ball. If you had a little small three and three quarter inch scale, you could do a little Miley Cyrus on this sitting on this.
And you can actually just sort of snap his arms off and you can almost make him look like just a normal shirtless guy wearing circus pants. You can give him this head that looks so much like Kingpin. <laughs> he still looks kind of deranged. I like this figure a lot with the claws on. I think this is the way I'm going to pose her. This is how she should be. But I do like the idea of giving her exam gloves. So. <laughs> yeah, there's there's some jokes to be made with that. Um, that we won't make in my channel. <laughs> Some these figures are pretty fun so far. All of the accessories are different. I keep I just have this sneaky suspicion that this originally was molded for a Harry Potter figure, like this is that Nimbus three thousand or whatever that was called, because it looks like a flying broom, not necessarily a evil jack o' lantern man, man's weapon broom. But I do like his belt because that's definitely an original. I think the body is. Oh. I probably already have one that has the same body because they they are prone to reusing it because we already know that Luke Cage um, is Hydro Man's body. Maybe like that. Looks even better. Yeah, because of the buckle on the front. I like it like this. Get him in a good. Fighting stance. You can pose these figures really well. That's. That's gonna look. That will pose really good. Like him going head to head with Drax or something. kind of think Dave Bautista would win, would have the edge on that. And I think Absorbing Man would probably beat them all. Because he's just one click below the Hulk. As a matter of fact, this character, if you watch the um, the original Hulk movie um, with, well not the original, but the one that they made with Eric Banya before all the Marvel movies came out. It was directed by Ang Lee, that Hulk movie. Um, he... Nick Nolte, who played David Banner, his father, became Absorbing Man. So, which is not the case, not how it was in the comics, but because, um, but uh, so if you want to see Absorbing Man in film, he actually was in the in the Hulk movie with Eric Banya. The second Hulk with uh, oh, uh, Ed Norton, the slightly better one that was kind of a sequel slash reboot. He fought against Abomination, I think. I think that's what that was. So, I've got another figure. Yep, I got the last, well, second to last Captain Marvel. Um, the last being the one where she's still wearing the uh, the Kree outfit. Um, the blue, the green one, which I wish I could find. It's pretty hard to find one. But this is... Uh, This is the the straight up Captain Marvel uh, that you can okay. And there's two versions of this one. There's the Gamma version and this version, which I prefer this one. The Gamma one's cool. She has some see-through limbs. She's supposed to be, you know, an energy form. Whereas this one, she's more... Uh, the face sculpt's different, which is kind of interesting. So they did put a lot into making these. But I like this better because you can... First of all... Uh, let me swap heads. Okay, I think I would rather pose it with this head. 
Okay. There we go. That actually kind of like that look. And then you can you can give her alternate hands like or you could give her like for example You could give her one open hand and one fist. So, like you can have her waving at somebody. Like, hi. I think these are for flying, but uh, you can really do it, any, anything you want to do with it. She could do the the left-handed salute, which is improper. <laughs> it would be kind of cool to have an action figure that did salute, which they don't really have. Or you could swap out the other hand. And then you could put her in sort of kind of a natural pose here where she's, you know, just sort of standing listening. Facial sculpt is very, very good. It looks like Brie Larson a lot. Um, just all around prefer this figure. Um, I I like this fine, but this is um, I think it's a good one for posing. So all right. So this was a pretty good little lot of Marvel Legends. And um, I finally got a builder figure finished. I finally got a Rosero Dawson. I can redo some scenes from Clerks too. <laughs> I'm gonna get a sip of coffee here. I still would like to find the the, the Cree version of Captain Marvel, where she's in the green outfit. That I still would like to get that one if I could find it. I had it in my hand one time in a dirt cheap of all places, and I put it back. And I probably should have gotten it. Because that's actually turned out to be pretty hard to find. This will be a good poser. I think these will look great on my shelf. These are all going to look really, really good. And the facial sculpts for these, as I've said, Marvel makes great facial sculpts. They have lousy accessories. I mean, Drax doesn't. No, actually, these are all pretty much molded in the same color. Uh, th they do have lousy accessories. They really do. This is... For a builder figure, this is a lousy accessory. They could have done a wash over like they showed in the picture. Like how his arm is. It should have had a good wash on that wrecking ball. And they didn't. So it's not it's still a cool figure. But they they do go cheap on the accessories, and that's annoying. The face sculpt, great. Accessories, whatever. I'm like almost he feels so fragile in the chest I'm almost afraid to even bend this joint here because it almost feels like it won't bend that's not good now I got this at Ollie's this two pack like I can't even bend him here that's disappointing for Marvel Legends uh, I, I hope you can find this at Ollie's because I wouldn't pay full price for this because you can't even bend it and you don't even want to force it because this feels so cheap and fragile. Which is sad commentary. Especially in my last review when I was showing the ZD versions of these that are becoming superior faster than Marvel can keep up their standard. I don't mean Marvel, I mean Hasbro. 
Hasbro, this is unacceptable. I mean, you can't even use this joint. It's almost like it's glued together. That's not good. This one feels much more solid. Much more sturdy. This one feels good and solid. It automatically snaps into a good pose. Kind of cheap. But at least it works. Feels pretty good. Feels pretty solid. He can't really hold his weapons very well. His fingers are... But it's still a good figure. I'm not complaining. This is still a really good figure. And he pairs up nicely with Morbius. It's like the two Halloween figures. Morbius is just such a cool figure. I don't know how the movie's going to be. Um, with Jared Leto. I don't know. I, I mean... Jared Leto was capable of doing some good acting. If you've seen Chapter 27 or other movies, I mean, he's capable of, of really giving 110%. Just don't know about another superhero, but we'll see. He can surprise you. I feel kind of bad because I don't blame that whole Joker thing on him. He was doing, you know, he that was an interpretation, and they went with it. You know, obvi it's obviously, if you think that the people in the studio don't really pull the strings on this stuff, <laughs> they told him what to do, and they were going for a look that wasn't really, uh, really accepted by the the fans. They didn't want to see that. They wanted a Joker that was like an urban gangster. They wanted a Joker that was like a you know hip urban gangster and it just didn't work see when we try to make batman more realistic and here i go again i'm fixing to say something because the movie joker was very realistic but it was phenomenally good i mean it you either had to go in the direction that joaquin phoenix went in where it was hyper realistic or or we go back to jack nicholson and caesar romero but um, this Suicide Squad tried to be in between. They wanted to be a little bit like realism and a lot of like slapstick. And I'm a, I'm a Suicide Squad defender. I'm still curious to see how uh, um, James Gunn's going to, what he's going to give us. I mean, looking at Guardians of the Galaxy, he's probably going to be good. James Gunn is when it comes to humor and story building and and ensemble building making groups you know making fun stories with groups of characters he, he's a master at that so all these Marvel Legends are really really good figures really good display figures really fun collectibles Highly detailed, sturdy, articulate. Few critiques I pointed out in the video. I'm still like this. Why this doesn't bend, I don't know. Or even if it's not even supposed to bend. But I almost, like I said, I don't want to force it because I'm afraid I'm going to break something. It doesn't feel super sturdy, which is so ironic because this is Nick. This is Luke Cage, you know. I almost, you know, Nick Cage, actually, his real name is Nicholas Coppola. He chose the name, the acting name Nick Cage after Luke Cage. So if I accidentally call him Nick Cage, that's not too much of a mistake. Because he, that's where that comes from. Because uh, Nick Cage is a huge comic book fan. Some good figures, a good build a figure, and uh, and uh, hanging out with you again and enjoying some time. And I and I certainly enjoyed it, and I hope you did too. So uh, keep coming back, and I'll we'll keep hanging out, looking at books, newspapers, action figures, talking about stuff. Um, that's what I do here. It's nothing crazy. It's low production. It's old school YouTube. And I hope you enjoy it. So if you haven't done so, go ahead and subscribe and click the bell icon. And 
give me a thumbs up if you like the video and leave a comment. All right. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.